Hey everyone, this is Zephyr. I wanted to show off some of the great new features and what makes them possible in this latest release of the Bailiwiki Modular Town, now available on Patreon. First, I'm importing the example Gothic castle scenes, and I'm opening those up. You'll notice that a bunch of import prompts appear at the top of the screen. Normally, when you import a scene from a compendium, map notes lose their journal entry data, but Stair opens here just like you would hope it would. When you go into the map note config, the journal entry is there too, instead of saying unknown and being empty. This organ context note is there, letting you know about a secret organ that slides out of the way, and there are quick encounter journal entries, like this one, for six gray oozes that spawn out of the oozing fountains. If you click Run Encounter, with the power of quick encounters, you summon six oozes in precise positions and add them to the combat tracker, where you can begin combat, roll initiative, and have a battle with your players, already pre-built. When you're done, it'll even tell you how much XP your character's earned. Then, you can select the tokens and delete them, it's like nothing ever happened, and you can run the encounter again. There's another here in the sacristy for a ghost that has flavor text. You'll find a total of 11 of these encounters throughout the two example castle scenes now available. Now that we've seen the power of quick encounters for adding these really cool features to different rooms within the castle system with ease and turnkey for GMs, I want to tell you what makes them possible. The first, it's in the name, Quick Encounters. It's a great way to save positional data for tokens and have ready-to-go encounters whether you're a developer or you're a GM. So I definitely recommend everyone take a look at Quick Encounters to see how they can up their games with it. For developers, the thing that allows us to keep all of these amazing map notes is Scene Packer. If you're a GM, all you have to do is have it installed and it will handle the rest. For us module developers, there's a lot of exciting opportunities for adding flavor and texture to our scenes and adventures with it. First, we'll take a look at Quick Encounters. Then, we'll get into all of the possibilities with Scene Packer. To create these Quick Encounters, first, place all of the tokens that you want onto the scene and in the position you want them. Then select them and click the fist icon for Quick Encounters. This will generate the Quick Encounters dialog and journal entry for you. You can update the Quick Encounter name, which will also update the map pin for you later in the journal entry, and you can add flavor text for you or the GM to recite when the players trigger this encounter. When you're happy, save the entry and save the quick encounter. Then you've got a map pin that you can adjust, move into position, and double click later to run the quick encounter again, summoning all of the tokens with the same positional data, and then a journal entry is created in your journal entries directory. One of the great things about quick encounters is you can use dice rolls rather than just numbers for your combat. Here, I used 1d6, saved, and ran the encounter. It rolled all six, so all six oozes spawned, but if I change it to 1d4 plus 2 and save the encounter and then run it, then it ends up giving me a new result. In this case, we're going to summon five oozes, so a three on the die plus two, and it adds them to the combat tracker and places them in five random locations among the positional data that the quick encounter stores. Another great feature of Quick Encounters is that you're not locked in to only running fresh encounters. So here, I've summoned my six oozes using my dice rolls already, and they're attacking the party, they're moving around. Maybe I want the fountains to continue spawning oozes until the fountains themselves are destroyed. So while the oozes have moved out, I can then click on the Quick Encounter, and I can change my roll formula or the amount and save it, and run the Quick Encounter again to spawn a new round of randomized enemies with the same positional data. This is a great trick for if you have a villain with a layer action to summon reinforcements. That way you can bring those in mid-combat without having to drag in actors one by one and potentially break the flow of combat. There are a few important things to keep in mind with Quick Encounters to have success. You'll notice that when I change this Quick Encounter from 6 to 4, the number of checked boxes reduces by 2. This looks perfectly normal and it will randomly pick four of those starting positions to keep for the oozes if you want to run with only four oozes. I've placed these, the encounter runs great. However, a problem arises when I go back and I try to run the encounter again with the same original six. I end up losing the positional data. And you'll see that when we open this up and change the information to six and save the encounter, that the two boxes come back, but they're no longer checked. They don't have positional data anymore. So I run this encounter, the six oozes spawn but two of them are marked as invisible and centered on the note. So if you change 
or add to the total amount, extra tokens that don't have positional data will spawn centered on your note. Just keep that in mind when you're planning out your encounters and changing them. Another important thing to keep in mind is if you try to create a quick encounter and you're missing actor data for the tokens, then clicking the button won't do anything. This usually happens if you're importing from a compendium and you import from the compendium, say, three times, and then you delete the extras, then you actually lose the actor data associated with the token. To fix this, the easiest way is just to delete all of your tokens and redrag them purely from your actors directory rather than from a compendium. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm dragging them all in. You'll notice that the new swarms of spiders all have the health bar, whereas before one of them was missing it. That's usually a good indicator. And when I run this quick encounter, it generates properly and I can save everything and move on. Now that we've seen the power of quick encounters, I want to walk through another great feature of Scene Packer. As you probably know, multi-level token using map notes is really dependent upon your map notes having the right permissions when they get imported. This is something that Scene Packer helps a lot with. So we're going to use Scene Packer to not only package up the data that we created in those quick encounters earlier, but also to preserve these stair journal entries when we go to export this scene as well, preserving our multi-level tokens. So once I have this setup functioning properly, then I can go in and use Scene Packer to pack this scene and preserve this information. The module that allows us to preserve all of this journal and actor data and keeping the map pins is Scene Packer. It's a great module put together by Blair, and he's put out a lot of wonderful documentation built into the module itself, and you can review that at any time if you need tips. One of the great things about Scene Packer is if you're a GM, you really don't have to do much. Blair has put in some instructions in case you need to troubleshoot or have any questions, but for the most part, it's going to be completely turnkey. It's really on the module developers to build out using this module. For developers, there's great comprehensive README if you ever need to refer back to this while you're in your Foundry instance. The main thing that you need to keep in mind as a developer is that you need to use the example module JavaScript to make sure that Scene Packer knows what compendiums in your module to look for. There are fields here for a welcome message that you can display to GMs as soon as they look at the first scene they've imported from your module. You can also tell it to import additional journal entries and macros regardless of what scene they look at. Something that's really important if you're going to use quick encounters is you need to make sure that you specify your creature packs. I'm going to be using the default specified D&D 5e monsters because I'm creating quick encounters using the D&D 5e SRD content included with the 5e system. You can change this to Pathfinder or Savage Worlds or Shadowrun or Ars Magica, anything that is a system or another module you can call to. And by default, it's also going to call your own module's actors compendium if you're creating custom creatures and packaging them there. So make sure you have this in your module.json or script that your module calls. And next, we're going to look into exactly how to pack these scenes for quick encounters. Before packing any scenes, we need to make sure we have the extra context menus for Scene Packer. You can do that from your module settings. And for GMs, this is only useful for debugging. But for developers, this is how you actually tell the system to pack up your scenes. Now I'm going to walk you through how to pack your scenes with quick encounters. Again, you can always refer to this readme provided with the scene packer module in case you need a reference while you're in Foundry. The first step is normally to export your actors to your module's actor compendium. In this case, I'm using only creatures that are from the D&D 5e monsters compendium, so I don't need to take this extra step. But it's important that whatever compendium your monsters in your quick encounters are in is referenced by your module.json or that script earlier. So now I'm going to move my quick encounters not to this top folder that is from importing, but to my compendium folders ready version of the module journal entries. Once I have that prepared, I'm going to go in and toggle the edit lock for my journals compendium for the module, and then I will export my folder to that compendium. In this case, I'm using the compendium folders export folder structure option. If you're not using compendium folders, you can just export to compendium as normal. Once you have your journal entries exported, now we need to fix the links to make sure that they're only referencing things that are in compendiums rather than world data. 
If they only reference world data, they won't work on other people's instances once they import the scenes. So I'm going to use this relink compendium journal entries macro and make sure I'm packing against the correct module. I'm not going to click the save changes box because I want to just see a dry run. I highly recommend doing this for troubleshooting. So I'm going to bring up my console with F12 and clear it using either the clear command or the circle with the line through it. Then I'm going to hit this relink button and it's going to spit everything into the console. Because I didn't have that tick box change, nothing is binding. I did get two errors, so I'm scrolling up to find them. And I can see that those are for a quick encounter in the towns module that we don't actually have active. So I'm not concerned with it for this particular operation. I'm only worried about things on the modular castle example scenes. So I can safely ignore those for now. Again, this is a great way to double check for errors and also see if things are linking, which might be important if you have similar names to something in another compendium that your module is calling for. Once you're happy with it, you can close the console and bring up that macro again, and this time select Save Changes, and it will automatically unlock your journals entry compendium, update all the journals, and then close it again. The reason why we need to do that is we pull up this unexported and fixed version, and it just references an actor. But in the quick encounters that I already import for testing, you'll see that it references a compendium. So everyone with the 5e monsters compendium will have this journal entry preserved. Once the journal entries are all fixed, we're ready to import scenes. If you right click a scene and it has the options to unpack or clear data, that means the data is not packed. If it has pack scene data, then you are able to pack it. One of the great things about Scene Packer is that the first time you view the scene as a GM, it will unpack and then clear the pack data. Because it clears that pack data, we don't want to actually be on those scenes when we're packing it for our module. So we're gonna to go to a blank scene or another scene that we know we don't need data packed for. Then we'll right click on our appropriate scene and select pack scene data and make sure we point to the correct module so that it looks for that module's JSON to see where to look for compendiums. I got an error here for an actor because it's not in a compendium. This isn't a concern for me because I don't actually want that actor to be imported or be found in a compendium. And it looks like everything is good. You can see that it's writing tokens and journal entries to that particular scene. Now I'm ready to export that to my scenes compendium. So I toggle my edit lock and export my folder. Once again, I'm using compendium folders, so I'll use the export folder structure option, but if you're not using compendium folders, then you can use the normal export to compendium feature. Now that I have all of my module compendiums updated, I can create a new world on the same instance, enable all of my prerequisite modules, and then because I'm working in a module rather than world data, I will be able to use those same compendiums I just updated in my test world. So I'm just going to prepare that and then import the scenes that I want to test. And I can see the scene packer popped up asking for more importing. It doesn't work with compendium folders, so I'm going to say no to that and import them manually. Now that my world is all set up, I'm going to go ahead and view the castle scenes I just packed up. I've got all the importing prompts and we can see the welcome entry appeared, giving me some information about the module. My quick encounter is preserved, so I'm running hall monitors right now with two skeletons and two animated armor. They're in the positions I expect them to be in, and I can move everything around. And when I end the encounter, it does tell me how much XP the party earned. And I can delete those tokens, click on the note again, and I can run the encounter again so it reset successfully. My stairs came through properly, and my little secret door note came in. So it looks like everything is all there double checking really quick on the first floor, and I can see this actor that I mentioned before still works as expected. It just wasn't imported or in a compendium. And I can see all of the actors from my quick encounters are there. I spawn an animated armor, and my multi-level token works properly too. So everything is looking good. And if I view my journals, I can see that all of the entries have been imported, but it does not preserve compendium folders information. I wanted to open up another new test world to show off the town with Scene Packer. Again, my entry pops up, and you can see this is a lot of tips and information about the modules. Then I also have these nice map pins that, rather than calling to stairs or something like that, it actually mentions the scene in my compendiums, and that was also fixed with the fixed journal entries macro. I can import those scenes if I haven't already and have them ready to go. 
This has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching. All of the scenes that I've demonstrated here today are available through the BailiWiki Premium Modules on Patreon. I hope that this has really shown the power of quick encounters for GMs and developers alike to create unique and interesting encounters that are easy to run in game. And I hope that it has showcased the power of Scene Packer for enabling things like quick encounters, multi-level tokens, and contextual journal entries to add flavor and life to scenes, modules, and adventures. If you have any questions or would like to see a follow-up video, please let us know in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, and have a good one.